Okay, so uh, in the previous one we looked at uh, kind of fixing some of the skin weights. Um, I don't have the time really to sit and do the whole entire model, so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, but once you, so if we did have these two, I think we saw uh, the difference between the two, right? So, okay, deflated leg, right? Let's go back and just put them on the ground. We can select the mesh itself. And if we built this correctly, so it's symmetrical down the middle, which looks like it's absolutely been done that way. Good job, Tyler. So it's like this skin. And what we're gonna do is um, um, edit the weighting by mirroring it. So we're gonna mirror the skin weights and we'll choose the option. And again, the default would be this. We want it to go from the Y uh, along the YZ axis and we want the to go from the positive X to the negative X. So whatever we worked on on this right hand side as we face the object, those values are going to translate to the other side. So we'll go ahead and hit apply. Mm -hmm. Rotate. All right, so you can see they're working kind of uh, together. Okay. So now it's done, <clears throat> what we want to do is create a little control rig. We certainly could create our own IK setup if you're familiar with that, and the rest of the body could probably be forward IK, that would be fine. Um, but another way is to use the Maya, the kind of middleware plugin, human IK, to do that for us. So what I'm gonna do is uh, double click on that, and it's this little uh, um, person icon here. <coughs> so, um, Brings up this, there's actually a little menu that's uh, inside this little icon. It also has this basic menu. So what we wanna do is, um, normally you would create a skeleton. Well, we've already done the skeleton, we've found it. Really what we need to do is define what the skeleton is so that um, uh, the human IK will know what to do when we create the skeleton, or the uh, control rig. So I'm gonna click on define the skeleton it brings up this little icon that shows uh, where these basic joints are. So um, if we had them named, they, you know, that might help in the process. But really what we want to do is just um, do the assigning of these joints. So if I double click on this left upper leg, I can come over and click on the corresponding leg for it. So I'm just going to do this over and over again, right? So double click and that's the joint. And this is just telling Maya, hey, that joint you're looking for, that's gonna be the right leg, that's that one. Right. I'm just gonna keep going through. Oops. And that one. Oops, did I get it already? Let's see what I did here. Let's make sure I got that one. Yes, it's the right leg. And this will be the hip joint there. This one's gonna be the spine. If we want to, we can unfold that and double click on the next spine, make that there. I believe that's the way it goes. Don't quote me on that. Uh, we'll go just do one joint for the collarbone. Since we don't have a hand joint, I'm just gonna select that little joint there at the end. Um, <coughs> and see when I do this, it gives me a green coloring, but this one here, it all of a sudden it got yellow and it's okay with it, but it doesn't like, you can see it's giving me some input. Um, it says the left arm doesn't seem to be parallel to the X axis. Again, it wants to really be in this T pose. It doesn't like how this is set up, but it will tolerate it, right? So let's go back here. So that one. It also doesn't like that I don't have another joint there. Oops. And we're gonna call that the head right there. And I guess it would be the neck. Good enough. And we'll go back and the, um, so, um, the human IK 
gives me this little symbol basically saying it's not, you know, if it, if, when we started, it gave us a stop sign. Now it's giving us a yield. So it's kind of on board, but again, it has these joints that it's not really totally thrilled with. We're going to make it live with it. So once we have it all defined, we want to go ahead and basically set the definition. So we're going to go ahead and unlock the uh, setup. And I don't know if you have to select the join or not, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to go back up to the menu. And now what I'm going to do is say, let's go ahead and create the control rig for it. All right. So my uh, human IK sets up all these controllers that we have in there, which is similar to what we're used to. So let's, you know, if I select this foot controller, you can see I can do this, this moving and pose it. One thing about the human IK is that the IK kind of propagates itself through the whole body. So normally we would set things up. You wouldn't see as much, uh, basically this would all be locked in place. I could stretch the leg out, but it wouldn't affect where everything else is coming from. This, you know, this is helpful for motion capture. Um, this isn't really my favorite way to, uh, um, to work. <laughs> you can see that's uh, a little crazy at times, right? So we're getting decent results, but it certainly will be fine for allowing you to uh, pose your character, right? With however you want to do that. Sometimes I just, it's not really my favorite thing. Um, you can select that. You can also just use it as kind of a forward kinematic uh, setup. target there. We can use that to reorient how that leg works. Right, so you can see I'm starting to set up a pose. Not really the best pose out there. Um, but you get the idea. Right, so it's not the best thing in my opinion. It's, it has some limitations as it relates to animating, but uh, if you want to investigate this further, it's human IK. You can read up on some of the information. But in a relatively short amount of time, we've taken this character, we've uh, rigged that character, and um, if you'll indulge me real quick here, you could turn around and get something like, oops, there we go. So uh, I took, um, as an example, to see how this process would work. I went ahead and rigged the character. So go ahead and go full screen here. And I exported the object once I had the pose I wanted. I froze the geometry. Basically, I selected the geometry and did duplicate, which froze it into that position. Export it into Moto and just did a nice little turntable. Set this up to loop. Um, and rendered relatively quickly. Uh, it's just me, but I like rendering in Moto. I think it's uh, just a better workflow. Um, there's some sculpting that could be done to fix little problems here and there. You can see as this comes around the backside, there's actually some deformation here. Um, some of this got fixed. Some of it we just I just left because it was a demonstration. But you could uh, certainly, instead of spending a lot of time with the skin weights, once you have this pose the way you want, I would just I would just use sculpting to kind of fix that. Okay, so that's a little workflow. Hopefully that is helpful.